Lewis Diagrams Four models make it very easy to see the electrons in each energy shell, but Lewis Diagrams efficiently show their bonding capabilities. They only show the valence electrons. Dots representing electrons are placed around the element symbols at the points of the compass north, east, south, and west. Carbon has four valence electrons. If another element has more than four valence electrons, the fifth electron is placed up here, and so on. However, carbon only has the four electrons, so it's shown this way. Lewis dots clearly show the elements in the same group on the periodic table have the same number of valence electrons. Group 1 has one valence electron. Group 2 has 2. Group 13 has 3. Group 14 has 4. Group 15 has 5. Group 16 has 6. Group 17 has 7. And group 18, the noble gases, has four electron shells. Helium only has one shell, so it doesn't follow the octet rule, but all the others do. Drawing Lewis Diagrams for Ions and Ionic Compounds Lewis Diagrams make it easy to draw ions and ionic bonds. They only show the valence electrons. For positive ions, one electron dot is removed from the valence shell for each positive charge of the ion. For negative ions, one electron dot is added to each valence shell for each negative charge of the ion. Let's take a look at an example. Take a look at sodium. Sodium has one valence electron. It often bonds with chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. Now we know what happens next. That lone electron is going to be drawn to chlorine and basically you're going to get this situation where sodium loses its only outer ring valence electron and chlorine gains it to have a stable octet. This is the result, but it's shown like this. We put square brackets around the sodium and put a positive charge there to show that it has now lost one electron or one negative charge. That leaves it with one more positive charge than negative charge because it hasn't lost any protons in its nucleus. To draw chlorine, you would draw it like this. This is now called a chloride ion because it's gained this electron. And as a result, it's got one more negative charge than positive charge. So we have to make sure we put square brackets around the whole thing, still showing the electrons in the valence shell with the negative sign up here. We can also see how other ionic compounds form. Magnesium has two valence electrons. It forms a bond with oxygen, which has six valence electrons. Oxygen needs two valence electrons to complete its stable octet, and it gets them from magnesium. So if magnesium loses its two electrons, this is the form it takes. We show it as magnesium in square brackets with 
a two plus charge. And because oxygen has gained two electrons, it now has a two minus charge. The resulting compound is called magnesium chloride, and it's shown like this. Here's one more. Calcium and chlorine often form, form bonds to form a compound called calcium chloride. Calcium has two valence electrons. Chlorine has seven out of eight. It only needs one more. So it actually takes two chlorine ions to join with one calcium ion. The result is calcium chloride. Lewis diagrams of covalent bonds. Here we see another example of how a Lewis dot diagram can help us draw a bond structure. And it's not a lot different for covalent bonds than it is for ionic bonds. We're going to make a compound called hydrogen fluoride, made of course of two nonmetals since it's a covalent bond. You can see that hydrogen has one valence electron, and fluorine has seven out of eight. In this case, the electrons are going to be shared. They're not actually going to be uh, transferred as they are in an ionic bond. And in order to show that there are shared electrons forming a bond, we use this symbol, just a straight line that shows where the shared pair is. Non-bonding electrons are still shown as dots. Lewis diagrams of diatomic molecules. A diatomic molecule is a pair of atoms that are joined by covalent bonds. Some elements form diatomic molecules and are called diatomic elements. These are the diatomic elements, hydrogen, fluorine, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You should memorize this list. Lewis diagrams of diatomic molecules can also be drawn. So if we have two oxygen atoms, they're going to be more stable if they each have a stable octet. And the, the electrons are going to rearrange themselves so that a bond can form right here and right here between these two oxygen atoms. The end result is this. Only instead of drawing these two sets of electron pairs, the bonding pairs, we're now drawing straight lines. So that bonding pair represents that straight line. And this bonding pair represents is represented by that straight line. Challenge yourself right now. Draw the Lewis diagram for boron. Pause this video and then resume when you're ready. Here's the Lewis diagram for boron. Draw the Lewis diagram for the ionic compound, sodium oxide. This is more challenging. Pause the video and give it a try. Here's the compound. Uh, you can see that there are straight lines representing bonds, showing that sodium and oxygen form a double bond over here, and sodium and the other oxygen form another du double bond over here. And each one of these atoms now has a stable octet in its outer shell. Here are some suggested activities to help you practice this information.